I will plop it or, or I will answer the questions or, or, or speak them out loud in the room. So welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to get big moves and big profits trading this strategy. If you have questions today, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. As Marissa said, I do appear on TV. I appear pretty much in every channel, mostly talking about the stock market and also about inflation. Obviously, we had an inflation number this morning. The market is up, actually, because the number was better than expected. So we're, we're living in a very interesting time right now because some things have gone up in prices, some things have gone down in prices. So earnings season begins on Friday, which is a very important time to trade. Why? Stocks in the market usually move a lot during earnings season. So even though it's the summer, July 14th is the beginning of earnings season, which is this Friday, and it lasts about six weeks. So we're talking today about getting big moves and stocks in the market. That's the time you want to trade. Mostly I trade earnings. I do trade stocks sometimes that move on news or economic data, like for example today. But really the most profitable gaps you're ever going to get or moves in on any particular day is going to be on earnings. So that's what we're going to talk about today as well. So why are you here? Hopefully you're here to listen to me talk and all the other speakers here today to learn something about tra trading. Maybe you're trading and you're, you're losing money and you need a good strategy. Maybe you're making money, but you're not making enough money. Maybe you're new and you've never traded in your life and you have no idea where to start, or maybe you just need a strategy, which today I'm gonna to talk about my specific tra uh, trading strategy. And I've been trading since the end of 2008. So I've been trading for 15 years. It's really, really hard to believe. Prior to uh, my trading career, I was a mortgage broker, which I loved. I loved for a long, long time. But then in 2007 and 2008, the mortgage industry changed. So I found myself looking for a new career. So when I started out trading the stock market, I actually wanted to do this full time. So you may not actually want to trade full time. You may want to trade part time. But for me, I wanted a new career. You know, there's a lot of people out there that want to make extra money. They like what they do, but they don't make enough money right now to cover the cost of the cost of living. Again, increased prices, inflation. One of the things that's interesting to me about the inflation number is it doesn't count food. Well, if, if you're a shopper, if you grocery shop, you know that even in the last three years, some food prices have gone up 200, 300%, which is just crazy. So, you know, and they don't count that number in the inflation number. Anyways, if you wanna trade for a living, you have to have a set strategy that you use every day, just like if you were going into work, just like if you were going into a job, just like if you were going into a trading floor. Again, I live in Manhattan, I live in New York, but you know, hardly anybody goes down to the NASDAQ, to the stock market. I've done a couple of television hits down there, but actually it's a very, very small space. People trade from home. Even professional traders trade from home. Someone is saying they can't hear me. Can everybody hear me? Marissa, can you hear me? Do you have sound? Okay. All right, not sure what's happening with that person, but hopefully, hopefully everybody else can hear me. <laughs> okay, good. Anyways, you can do this from anywhere in the world. And you could trade part-time if you want to be. But trading can be fun. Trading can also be very lucrative. You know, it's hard for people when they're starting out because they don't know what to do. And it's hard when you lose in a trade. But the fact is it can be very lucrative. And that's why everybody wants to do it. I'm showing here you here this is May's results in the live trading room. This is an average risk of $2,800 per trade. I made $59,912 in the month of May. It was a good month. Then in the month of June, I made 57,752. These are mostly shorts. These are all gaps. We're gonna talk about gaps today, which is what I do. But long story short, in order to do this for a living, you must have good results. These are my results and stats year to date, from January up until yesterday. Yesterday, we actually went long we went long JPM, which is up today with the market. Stats for the year so far, we're halfway through 2023, 334,644. Most of these trades are shorts. And, and the interesting thing is I've been shorting in a bullish market. Now we did go long, like I said, JPM yesterday. But 
Anyways, if you want to trade, you have to have a set strategy in order to do it. So you need a strategy to be successful trading. And so everybody that gets up in the morning, you can't look at everything and say, I have no idea what I'm going to do today. You have to have a set plan of action in order to trade. So specifically what I do is I'm looking to trade between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning. Fast trades in and out. I'm also trying to get in on the one minute chart. We're gonna look at some one minute charts today. And again, like I said, I live in Manhattan and I do this from home. So there are people that are trading all over the world, the US stock market. One of the reasons that people like to trade the US stock market is because there's so much volume and momentum in the US markets. But you need a way to make the daily picks. Now, like I said, the market happens to be up today. But for me, I usually get up pretty early and look at what is gapping in the morning each and every day. I prefer to focus on the short side. So my niche is the short side of things. But like today, for example, I'm not trading right now this morning, I'm with you. But if I was trading today, I might go after JPM again. Why? Because we're up, okay? The markets are up, the banks are up, the markets rally, like I said, on economic data today. So again, the market is gapping up today. Now, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open, okay? So most stocks do not close, and I'm just going to give an example. Something would close at 2305 and open at 2305 the next day. That would not be a gap at all. That would be a neutral open. Most stocks and the market gap every day. Could be a penny, could be 10 pennies, could be a dollar, okay? Not every gap is what I call playable or predictable, okay? So I'm looking for the predictable gaps that I can say, this is gonna continue in the direction of the gap, up or down, okay? So a stock gap on the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. So what is a gap? Again, the market gaps most every day. So today we're up, tomorrow we could be down. Friday, we have the bank earnings. JPM, for example, reports earnings on Friday. That is going to affect the market, specifically the SPY. The S&P has been rallying, but if the bank earnings are bad, I always said this, you're not going to have the market move up and make new highs, make brand new all-time highs without the financials. The financials have had a very difficult year. As you well know, if you've been trading and you've been following the market, some banks have gone under this year. Now they're talking about bank consolidations. Uh, someone is saying, how large of an account do you use to get those results? First of all, you do not have to risk $2,800 per trade. You could risk $100 per trade, Casey. You can risk $200, $500, $1,000. But I would say a minimum, you have to have a margin account. These are day trades on margin. If you have a retail broker, you're going to have to have 4 to 1 margin. If you have a prop account, you can have, open up an account with less cash, and you're gonna get 10 to one margin. So you would need a minimum, a minimum at a prop place or a retail place, I'd say of 100 grand in order to risk $3,000, and I'm just using an average per trade. But you don't have to risk that much per trade. Does that make sense, Casey? If you wanna trade in an IRA, then you can do options, and we will be discussing options as well in a little bit here. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I have a niche where I'm looking for the gap. And again, today the market's gapping up. So gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. Because if you're trading on the side of institutional money, it's gonna be so much easier for you to make money trading than going against it. The biggest trade we had last week, which we are gonna talk about here today, actually was Nike. We did puts, we did puts in Nike and it dropped like a rock. That was, a, that was an options trade and we did that and it had a huge move. Why? Institutional money sold out of Nike, okay? So one of the reasons that I prefer to short, and again, this is whether I'm doing options or day trades, is because moves to the downside happen quicker and faster than moves to the upside. I always say this, longs take longer to go, okay? Shorts go quicker, why? Because panic comes into the market or stock very, very quickly. When somebody's down, and you know this if you've traded, if you're down money in a trade, you're not gonna wait a long time to kill it and to exit the trade. Whereas if you're thinking about buying something, for example, and if you're not long the market, 
you might think about it, think about it, think about it. There's no sense of urgency if you're not even in the trade. You're not even long the market right now. You're like, well, maybe I'll go long here today. Maybe I'll wait until earnings. Maybe I'll wait to see what the Fed does with interest rates. So one of the reasons the market is up today is because now people are talking about the fact they don't think that the Fed is going to raise rates two more times this year or half a point total between now and the end of the year. I'm not under that same belief system. Okay, they've already said they're going to raise rates a quarter in July, and they're probably going to raise rates the half a point they said, and they could even raise them more. So a lot of people, again, are very bullish on this market. But if we happen to start to sell off, it could be because of interest rates, it could be because of the Fed, it could be because of war in Ukraine with Russia, an escalation there, something like that that would happen. But I clicked this, this was earlier this morning just to show you what a live gap is. So this is this was again at 8.15 in the morning. So we're we're at a different price right now. We're you know 10 minutes into the open, but this is a gap. So again, this is the spy. So this was last night. Okay, this was after hours. So the market closed here at four o'clock. And then we had some buying that came into the market actually in the post market last night. Then the market gapped up this morning when it opened. So you see the price of the market here, this was early this morning, was around 4.43 and change. And we closed last night down in here, around 4.42 and change, okay? So the market's up. So that is a gap. This is a live gap here I'm showing you. So in order to trade my system, number one, you have to have charts. And number two, you have to have pre-market data and post-market data, okay? So I'm looking at all of these things and analyzing them in the morning before I'm making my decisions. But my gap system points the direction of the footprints of institutional money and gaps. Again, we're going to talk about Nike, which is a good example, but even the market's a good example today. Why? People are buying the market today. They're buying the market for the reasons I just said. They think that the Fed is going to back off now and only do one more rate hike in the next six months. Again, you can always create or make up or, or talk about a reason why something's happening. I'm focusing on the price, the price action in the gap, why it's happening. I don't care. You could have great earnings, fabulous earnings of the banks on Friday morning. And in the next week, Goldman Sachs is next week. It's another large bank. That chart has not looked so great. But you can have fabulous earnings and you could still have the stock sell off. You could have terrible earnings and you could have JPM up. Okay, so it doesn't always equate to exactly what you think in the price action. All right, so it's very, very important to look exactly what's happening in the price action. Now, here is Nike. This is what I was talking about earlier. Nike actually was earnings. Nike is a late one. Okay, this reports earnings late. So this had a gap. So again, this was actually before July 4th. Here was the gap in Nike. Stock closed, and this is the night before the earnings, around 113 and change. Boom, open in the morning. This was on June 30th. It was a Friday going into the July 4th holiday, and the stock closed around 111 and change. I mean, open at around 111 and change. So this was a gap down. So it closed here at one price and opened at a lower price, and we shorted this. Okay, we did a put. So if someone was asking about their IRA, you would buy a put, and you would sell the put. And that's how I do options. So I'm trading options on momentum. I'm day trading on momentum. So I'm saying we're talking about big moves today. This is a big move in the day for a day trade. This is a big move in the drop for an options trade. Again, one of the reasons why people go back and forth with options, people love options because someone was asking earlier, how much money do you need in an account? With an options account, you don't have to worry about margin. The, a cash account is all you need to trade options, and you can open up an options account with $2,000 minimum. You don't have to have a margin account. So people like options for that reason, plus the fact that you can trade your IRA. Of course, you have to check with your IRA administrator, with the broker to make sure you can do that. And people like options for that reason, okay? Personally, I like options because I can capture overnight moves. So if I'm doing a day trade, Okay, if I day trade this, boom, I'm in and out, I make a dollar, dollar fifty, whatever I make in this. I'm not entering the stock until this day. So I didn't get in here. I had no idea what the earnings were gonna do. Nobody does, okay? So you wait, and then I have developed a system where I will look at this gap and I will rate it. Again, this is a daily chart to determine if it's gonna fall or if it's gonna rally. All right. Now, in this case here, it did fall. So again, we shorted this. We did a put. 
But the one of the reasons why I think options are advantageous is because you can get overnight moves. So you can buy a put, which we did. We did the 109 puts in Nike here on this day on the 30th, and it fell all the way down, and it continued down in another gap down. This was the day after the fourth here on the 5th. So this is another gap down. Closed here, gap down, fell. Closed here, gap down, fell. This was the last week. The date of the expiration was the 7th. You could have still been in those 109 puts on the last day. I was not. I was out of it by the 6th. It was just too big of a move. But that was a, an example of a sell-off, okay, a sell-off in something. Here was another one we did. What is a gap? GIS. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped. So again, this, this is General Mills. This was back at the end of June too. Closed here around 80 and change, gap down under 79, fell. So you could have shorted this as a day trade. You could have bought a put, all right? And again, everything I'm doing, every single stock that I trade is a stock that you would know. You would know the company. You would be familiar with it. They all have volume. Again, down here is the volume. You always want to trade stocks with volume. Are the returns better with shorting? You mean day trades or options? As, as far as what I'm doing, I'm looking for one-to-one uh, as far as if you're talking about profit percentage, I'm always looking for one to one. So there's sometimes I'll take a day trade. Actually, we're going to go over this here in the Baidu and I'll make what would equate to, you know, 400 percent or something for the cash that I risked. But then most trades, I'm just looking for one to one. Same thing with the Nike option. That was a large trade. That was a large options trade. Not every trade that I take is that. So my goal is one to one. As far as what do I get the bigger moves in, I honestly can't tell you like the stats as far as percentages. I haven't, it's not something that I really looked at because I'm really trying to just get one per one. And most trades, that's what I'm getting. But sometimes I have a big one. Sometimes I do have a big one, but you're not gonna get someone to a piggy target in every single trade. But Nike is a good example of what? It's a good example of selling and follow through, okay? Follow through to the downside. Anyways, let's take a look here at Baidu. Stock close here, gap down, fell, boom. We shorted this. So again, what is a gap? The stock closed up here the night before around 141 and change and opened down here in the morning around 137 and change. This was a gap down, we shorted it. This was not earnings, okay? There was a different reason for this gap. I forget it was news or something like that. That was the last week of June as well. So this was a day trade. You would have needed an, a, a margin account to do this trade. So for example, the entry was 136.55. If you wanted to take 1,000 shares of Baidu, you would have needed $136,500 approximately in buying power. That's not cash. So in a margin account, you would have needed 34 grand, four to one at a, at a place like Ameritrade, for example. 10 to one, you would have needed around 13,650 at a place that is a prop account that gives you 10 to one cash. Does everyone understand that? So again, day trading is different than options trading, but still can be very lucrative. How? You have to capture the move. You gotta get the pick right. You gotta get a big move in it. And again, that's the whole point, okay? Because not every trade that I take works. I have trades that lose. You can go back and look at the stats I had for the year. We have some trades that lose. So you have to have consistent winners to cover the losers. And then you have to have some big winners that will cover the losers too. So then we did an ad in this, which was roughly around the same price. This is basically like doing two trades in one. I'll show you the one minute chart in a minute on this. Total shares was 6,000. Average price was 136.56. Exit was 135.05. Profit was $9,060. So this is a day trade. So again, you know, people love to do options because they don't have to open up an options account. But, you know, to be able to make $9,000 in several minutes in a day trade is phenomenal, okay? Again, you have to have a margin account to take this trade. So let's look at it. Here it is. Stock close here, gap down, fell, rallied. We shorted it. We added in it, got the drop out, done. So again, to be able to take a trade like this in less than an hour and make that kind of money is fabulous. Some people don't make that in a month, let alone one trade. And it could be your goal even for the week, okay? So we did an ad in this because it was a really good gap. It had a secondary entry 
and then we plopped it on. And again, you could have done the same thing with less size. You can trade, day trade with 100 share lots. All right. And one contract of an option is essential to is the same thing as having 100 shares. But everything that I do is about a method and a structure to enter and exit the picks because I'm trying to get a move, a move. That move usually happens between 930 and 10. Again, going back to Baidu here, here's 930, get the drop. Out, done, boom, 30 minutes. Now, again, if I'm doing options, I may get out of the option the same day or I may hold it. It may not go the, the first day that I do, did it, okay? So I may have to wait. Like JPM, we did calls in JPM. I did not get out of that yesterday. I wanted to wait for a secondary move. Any questions here so far? Now we're going along here with CCL. This was another day trade. Stock close here, gap down, fell. This was actually earnings. We shorted it. This was a cheaper one. This was a cheaper stock to do. We actually did a put in this as well. Um, but the day trade entry, again, very reasonably priced. $14.45, then we added at $14.80, and then we got out. $14 was the target. It broke it a little bit. $13.95 was the exit. Again, this is a day trade. $6,700 profit. You would need a margin account to do this trade. This was on June 6, 26. So let's take a look at what happened with this one. Stock close here, gap down, fell. Rallied, again, got the drop. Boom. Actually, that went down to 1380 and change. So again, momentum is the ticket to make money as a day trader. Momentum is the ticket to make money as an options trader. And again, if, you, if you're an options trader, if you've ever traded options, people are always worried about so many things that I don't even, I don't even think about, okay? Because no matter what price you pay for the option, no matter how much time you have left in it, a lot or a little, if you get a big move, you can make money, okay? That's it. You're trying to get the move. And again, volatility is actually how you can make a lot of money doing options. The volatility that comes in and what that comes in in the gap, okay? So everything that I do, my whole strategy is based on gaps. It's a strategy that I created. Like I said, it took me about three years. But I started trading in 2008. I did not know anything about uh, gaps at that point. And then it, it, my strategy evolved over three years trying to figure it out. But you have to win more than you lose in this business. It's the only way to consistently make profits. I think far too many people are losing. Or when they win, they make a little bit of money. I call it scalping. People scalp. They scalp trades that are up a little and they quicken out because they're afraid that it's not going to go, keep going because they don't I really have a way to really look at it to have 100% conviction that it's going to go in their direction. So they get scared, it backs up, and they just quick it out. It's hard to make money if you're making 5, 10 cents on something, even if you trade size with it, okay? I usually buy uh, options at the money, Vin is asking me, or it could be away from the money. No, I'm usually not doing them in the money. I'm usually doing them at the strike, okay, or away from the strike. And again, depending on what I'm doing, I'm doing the weeklies, depends on how far I think I'm going to do it. So Nike, Nike actually was, was around there when I initially looked at the 109 puts and then it opened above it but it fell through the strike and and then it went again say i was doing the market today which i'm not i'm not because i'm not trading here and again the market's just opening right now but if i wanted to go long the market today if i wanted to buy a call on the market today i'd probably do it right at the open meaning i would do it at the strike of the price i would buy calls for example right boom right where the spy was opening today if i wanted to do that and then i would see where we go but again, I'm looking to get the momentum, the momentum, the momentum, the momentum. In the case of the market today, what's happening? We're looking for buying, buying to come in. Again, for whatever reason, you can make up whatever reason you want. When I go on TV, when I go on national television, they always want to talk about their reasons. But when I trade, I mean, I don't care what the reason is. I am trading because I'm seeing the gap. And that's how I know. Do I use a screener to find stocks that have gapped up and down a certain percentage? I do not trade gaps and make decisions on gaps based about percentages at all. So my system has nothing to do with percentages. As far as screeners, that's something you need to talk to Rob about. So Rob and Marissa would be able to help you with charts, with pre-market data, 
with scanners and screeners to get that. You can buy their charting package and yes, then you can find thousands and thousands and thousands of gaps. So what you would learn from me is not how to find a gap, but how to qualify the gap and rate it so that you know that this is gonna continue in the direction of the gap. So I'm always going long a bullish gap and I'm always shorting a bearish gap. Am I going long every bullish gap up? No. Am I shorting every bearish gap down? No. So I qualify what I call the good ones and I use a rating system. It's a sliding scale to look at. The higher the rating, the better the gap. I spend more time analyzing and doing the pre-work than I do in the trade, okay? So that helps my accuracy. So I get up early. I'd say if you don't want to get up super duper early, you got to give yourself at least one hour, one hour to prep and get ready to trade. So I may be in a trade in five minutes, but I might have taken an hour and a half to figure out that that's the best stock that I want to trade that day. So the more money I make has to do with the pre-work that I do way before the open, okay? Way before the open. Um, these are my results for the for the advanced trader risk. I am going to show some options results that I use a higher risk because I'm taking more risk in my options. But I got the same results, but I made more money because I risked more per trade. But I wanted to show some beginner results for options, which I will. But these are my results. I run a live trading room. I call the trades live. If you were in the room, you did the trades with me. Again, how much money per trade you risk has to do with the size of your cash in your account has to do with the size and how much margin you have. Again, if you go to a retail broker, which is SIPC insured, you're only gonna get four to one margin. Again, that's why some people tend to want to do options because they can go to a retail broker, they can have their money SIPC insured and open up a cash account. Because if I buy an option or you would to be, if you would buy a call today, say for example, in the SPY, if it costs you a dollar and you got 10 contracts, $1,000 is all your pay. And if the trade goes bust and you lose, you can't lose more than $1,000, okay? So that's why also people like doing, it's like the insurance. It's like the insurance, you're protected. Like if, if the market would rally today and say, oh, screw it, I'm not gonna get out, I'm up. I think it's going higher the rest of the week. And then all of a sudden the bank earnings fail and it drops and you were wrong and he should have got out today. The most you would lose in that trade, for example, would be $1,000. If for some reason the market would turn on Friday, if for some reason the banks don't report well. Um, the pre-work is in the rating system that I teach in the class, Roger. Roger is asking about the pre-work. The pre-work is I analyze the charts in the gap. Like I showed you the spy this morning. I have a rating system and that's what I teach in a class that I teach once a month that I charge a fee for. We'll talk about that at the end. Now we're gonna talk about last week's trades. Everybody loves options. Again, I do not risk $1,000 on my options. I'm risking close to eight grand per trade. So I've been doing this for a long time. Again, I've been trading for 15 years. You have to have experience to risk that much money and you also have to have the money in your account. But I'm using it $1,000, you could use less. I think $1,000 is a good amount of money because if the trade goes on to work and you make $1,000, it's 1,000 bucks. And if I call a bunch of trades in a week and we have a good week, you can make close to 10 grand, which was last week. So I called six trades, there was one loser, five winners and zero break even. Win ratio was 83%. This is for last week, expired. This was the expiration on 7.7. An average return on investment with the one loser was 152%. So we're just going to quickly go through these because I know I, I've got to watch the clock here. This was Tesla. So if you decide you want to come trade options with me, it's a newsletter. I do not call the options in the room live. I call the day trades in the room live. But I am doing both. You can do both. You can do one. It's the same system. It's the same system. It's the gap. I'm playing the momentum in the gap. So I call the 240 puts right before the open on Monday the 26th. Cost was 550, two contracts. Again, I'm showing a beginner risk here for people because most people, I think, should be able to risk $1,000 if you're actively trading. And, and again, you could do this with an IRA account if you want. Profit was $900, 82%, that's a good trade. This is a normal trade, a good trade, a solid trade. Let's take a look at it. So again, here it was, 626. Closed here, gap down, rallied, broke. Again, fell fell down, and again, this I called away from the strike. So you see where this opened here, and I called the 240s, and we fell into the strike. Again, I called it right out of the gate early in the morning. You take the trade, you get in, and you get out. Boom, done, book it. So that was a good trade. This was the loser. CVS did not work. I called the 68 puts in this. I have no idea why this didn't work. It just didn't. 
I killed this the last day. It could have gone the last day. It didn't. This was a loser. What happened with this? Here was the gap. Again, it looked good the second day. So it was down the first day. I didn't kill it here. I said, this is going to go. It looks good. It looks good. And then it just, boom, it just didn't work. So again, some trades are going to lose. But if you risked whatever you risked in this, that's all that you would have lost. And again, it just completely went bust. But actually, this never, never really went right in our favor. Then we did Baidu. So we talked about the Baidu before. Again, before the open on June 29th, I also called the Baidu puts. Again, I'm mostly short. We did the Baidu 135 puts. I thought those were very reasonably priced. This is a stock that can move. 225 was the price, five contracts. Risk was 1125, sold at 380. 775 was a profit. Return on investment was 69%. And again, this was the Baidu gap on June 29th. Stock close here, gap down. Again, I called the trade, again, on the newsletter. I sent this out in the pre-market. I do not trade in the pre-market. So I'm getting ready to go. I'm doing the prep work. I'm saying I like Baidu. I want to do the day trade. I want to do the put. You can't do options before the open, okay? So you buy it into the open, and then it dropped, and then it fell, and then it moved, and there it goes. Then we did Nike, which was the biggest, the biggest, 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 biggest trade of the week. It was the Nike 109 puts. Again, this was Friday before July 4th, 641 in the morning, I call this, 641 in the morning. And again, the genius about my system is that three hours, almost three hours before the open, I can see that Nike is going to fall. So again, if you come and learn my method and take my class, you will be able to see that too. So you could have shorted Nike as a day trade. You could have bought Nike as a put. Again, this expired last week. And crazy as it sounds, you could have held it to the last day. Uh, so this, this was cheap too. 75 cents, 15 contracts. Risk, if you wanted to risk around 1,000, your risk should be the same on almost every trade, 11.25. Sold at 475, profit was 6,000. Return on investment was 533%. Why? Because it followed through. This is one of the trades that I say, you can't screw this up. You can't screw this up. Anybody that did this trade made money. You couldn't have screwed it up. It went the first day. It went the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the last day. You couldn't have screwed this trade up. In other words, sometimes people kill things too fast. You couldn't have messed it up. Um, I put targets on the newsletter. I do not show the entire newsletter what subscribers are paying for in here, but I put targets in the newsletter. But you can also watch it for the targets or just take it out and put a sell order. For example, some people are not full-time trading with me that are trading options with me because I, the newsletters go to your email. You can buy it. And you could, like for yesterday, you could have put a sell order on the JPM calls yesterday at 100%. It didn't hit. It didn't go to 100%. But you could buy the call, put a sell order. It's a limit order. It's a day order. If it hit, it would have hit you out. If it didn't, if you can't watch it, then, it, then, it, then you're in into the next day. So that's a way to manage them. Personally, I look for targets. And so I include targets in the newsletter. Then we did NVIDIA. This was a call again. Sometimes I'll go long. I told you I did JPM yesterday. This was a little baby one. We did NVIDIA. This is something that I've been watching to go higher as well. This was June 30th. I called this later. That's a little late for me to do a trade, but we did it. Price was $6. Two contracts. Risk was $1,200. Sold at $9.50. Uh, profit was $700 with a risk of $1,200. Again, this worked. So I got out of this in the pop. I wanted this to go big the day I called it. Stock closed here, gapped up, rallied, made a little bit of a move here. Here was the pop. It actually, it actually had another pop up here. Um, so you had a couple opportunities to get out of that. It went through the strike of 425. I called it underneath the strike. And that, again, was a call. Okay, that was a call. Uh, then we did Mew. Mew was another nice one. Not as big as Nike, but it's still a good trade. We did the Mew 63 puts that I called. I thought this was late. We actually, I actually did this late, but I knew it was still going. I knew it was still had a big move. My target in this was 60. It almost got there. 62, 61, 60, and this fell too. This was cheap. 90 cents was the cost of the Mew. This is again, if you bought 10, you would have paid $900. Okay. If you bought one, you would have paid 90 bucks. So at the end of the day, it's whatever you want to risk. Again, I'm risking more than this, but you can risk less. Okay, whatever works for you. But this is an average risk of 1,000. 
profit was 1800 this was all of last week's trades so great results again trading options is possible but you've got to get the momentum you got to get it right at that good price to get the momentum so here's the day we did the mu i knew it was still lower i should have really got in it on the open but i did it around noon anyways this fell 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 so again i did the 63s and then it went boom like that so again what I'm doing is really something that, you know, I've been doing for so long now. It's, I'm in such a groove doing it. I'm in a groove with my day trade, a groove with my options. And the class I teach does not interrupt my trading because I teach it once a month on a weekend. People come to me, they want to learn my method, and then I teach it to them. And then you can do it yourself. So you don't have to be in the live room with me if you don't want to. But I think being in the trading room makes it easier because I, I call the trades live. If you would like a trial for the trading room for this week, you can email me. Again, we should have a good close of the week, Thursday and Friday, with uh, the earnings season beginning. But anyways, you only need one good gap a day, one good play a day to make money. That's it. And sometimes you only need one good option, even, or two good options a week to make money, too. But a lot of people have been trading for a long time, and they have not been successful, and people get frustrated then, and they keep trading anyways, and then they don't want to take classes or learn anything. If you're not making money, then you have to learn a system that is going to be profitable for you, or you create your own. Now, for me, when I started out trading, I was working full-time as a mortgage broker, and I was trading, and the hours overlapped because I was working mortgages in a different time zone than on the East Coast. I was doing mortgages on the West Coast, so it worked out for me. But I would never want to go back to that point in my life. It was a struggle to try to figure out how to successfully trade the market. It took three years of my life and a lot of money. Now that I'm doing it, though, it is easy for me to trade. I don't like it when I have trades that lose. I get frustrated, but I have amnesia. Then the next day I get up, I get over it, I hit it hard the next day, and I move forward. So I think for people, once they're doing this over and over and over again, and they've been losing money for years, they get frustrated and down and depressed. But if you want to be successful, you cannot give up. People always say they want guarantees. I'll, t I'll give you a guarantee. If you want to make it, don't give up. That's your guarantee, because if you quit, you definitely will not make it. That I can guarantee you. So one of the things in life to be successful where you can make a lot of money and work from home for a few minutes a day, did you think it was going to be something easy that just falls in your lap? No. Even people that come to me, there's a cost to my class. My class is seven grand. That's the entry price to come in and learn what I know. So there's a cost to everything, whether it's you trading yourself, going back and forth, losing money, trying to figure it out on your own and developing your own system, or paying someone like me to learn mine. Nothing comes for free. And there is an amount of hard work. But once you get over the hump, once you do it, once you get past that point, then the sky's the limit. And then you can really have the life that you want. For me, money is a vehicle for me. You know, I, I, I've lived in Manhattan now for 11 years. But, you know, I moved last year at the end of the year, and I thought about leaving New York after COVID. Everybody else did, and I didn't. Actually, most of my friends left. I wanted to stay, but I also wanted to improve the quality of my life. So I moved into a much better area in the city. I'm in the most beautiful area. I live on Central Park. The fact is that money is a vehicle for you to have a better quality of life. If you're working your job 50, 60, 70 hours a week, if you're barely getting by, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, the quality of your life is not that good, is, is not that good. So you, you, it's ever since I moved to the park, I'm just like, you know, like my life has improved. One, I'm living in a beautiful building. Two, I'm living in a beautiful neighborhood. But three, I go outside in nature and it's just unbelievable to me that this even exists in New York City. In fact, if you go to YouTube, not only have I been putting, you know, trading videos, but I've been putting pictures and videos of, of uh, wildlife in New York. So my quality of life has improved, but it cost me a lot of money to move. It was a lot of work to move. Even though I paid people to pack me and move me, I had to unpack myself, clean, get situated. I still don't have my office organized, and I've been here now for eight, nine months. So, I mean, everything that you want to do in life, if you want to improve the quality of your life, is going to take work and it's going to cost money. Once you mentally grasp your head around that, you just move forward. You just make the decision and you move forward and you do it. And, you know, because complaining is not going to get you to be successful. OK, we we're talking earlier about inflation and recession. Still, could, could these things still happen? Yes. Could we still have a recession? Yes. Are you going to stop it? No. You can't, just like you can't stop inflation or anything that's happening in the world. 
you have one choice. Take the bull by the horns and you can earn more money. And whether you want to trade in the part-time or full-time, you can do options on the side. You don't have to be in the day trade room every day and do options. You have to make more money if you want to improve the quality of your life. No one is going to do it to you or for you. Um, I trade every day. I trade every day. I'm telling you that options, I'm telling you that earnings trades have large moves. So earnings are is a time to make a lot of money. Nike was an earnings trade, okay? So the next six weeks are earnings. So we get huge moves during earnings. So that's the time when you could hold for bigger moves, okay? Trading room up is at 9 a.m. in the morning. And we start trading at 9.30 and we trade and it's open to we're done. If we're done at 9.45, we're closed. If we're done at 10, then we're open to 10. So it's bottom line is that we're not open that long because I'm not trading that long. But again, everything has to do with the quality of your system. For me, I look for 26 points. So this is what you kind of learn from me. You learn the rating system, how I do it, how I rate the gap in the morning, how I do the pre-work. It's a 16 hour class with an hour break for lunch each day. It's always on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So it does not interfere with my trading. Um, no, you definitely can't quit. Casey's saying she's, she's not quitting. Good, good. Or I don't know if Casey is a man or a woman. I'm sorry. I guess it could be either. Um, <clears throat> you can't quit. You can't quit, you know. And there's many times when I was figuring out my system that I wanted to quit. But I didn't. In fact, I had a friend say to me, Melissa, oh my God, when are you going to stop this? When are you going to quit? And at that moment, I realized that never. And then when you, when you say you're never going to quit, then that's when you know you're going to make it. And then you get up the hunt. So I would chunk it out. I would break it down. Like some people say, oh, I can't possibly do this. I can't make this much money. I have too small of an account. No, take the amount of money that you have and break it down and chunk it out. $100 a day is $500 a week. $500 a week is $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month, again, is 24 grand a year. If you didn't make 24 grand a year last year in 2022 trading, or if you haven't made $12,000 trading up until this point, this year in 2023, then when you break it down, you're like, oh my gosh, I just, this is so simple. I don't have to make $10,000 in a trade. All I have to do is make $100 a day. Do you know what I mean? And that really can help you then break it down to a point that you can grasp it and that it makes it more doable for you in your head, okay? But again, I'm analyzing everything, doing the pre-work in the morning. I do use stops for my day trades or limit orders. I don't use stops for my options because my stop is what I risk. Uh, let me just see any questions. I don't use any complicated option strategies. I am trading momentum. I'm buying the call and selling it. I'm buying the put and selling it. The classes are not recorded. You must be there live. The classes are online. So you could be anywhere in the world. And someday I may have uh, in-person classes in New York City. Um, that's something that I'm looking into. But again, it's about consistent and correct trade selection. So what will you learn from me? If you come and take my class, you will learn the entries. You will learn the exits. You will learn the targets. You will learn how I pick the best gap to trade every day. You will learn the 26 points. And the checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock to read it correctly. Where is the institutional money buying it? Where is the institutional money selling it? And then as you do it, and as you start making money, you will stick with one thing. And then how do you make more money over time? You add size. You add size. Start with $500, then up it to $1,000, then up it to $1,500. Again, chunking it out. You know, a lot of people come to me, again, I've hear, heard all the stories because I've had my business, the Stock Swish, for 11 years now. I've heard lots of people's stories up and down the grid. You can make money doing this. I've been teaching people, some people have never traded before. So I've taught people that are beginners, I've taught people that are experienced, that don't know how to read gaps right or charts right. I'm very good at reading charts. So once you get good at price analysis and gap analysis, you can read anything. You could read, you could trade ETFs that are gapping, you could do swing trades, you could take long-term trades. Again, you know, you could do day trades, whatever you want to do, however you want to use the system. It's the idea of being able to predict the directional move of something that where it's going to go. Okay, where it's going to go. So in order to become successful, you have to be serious. That means learning from someone and taking direction. And again, it, you have two choices if you want to make money trading. You will either create your own system, which is what I did, that was very, like I said, it was exhausting in my life, 
or you will learn from someone else. And you know, nobody wakes up today and tomorrow and never traded in their life and takes one class and all of a sudden becomes successful. There's a process going through it. The takeaway probably from any class you've ever done, even if you didn't learn how to make money from that class, is probably something that you learned to help you, you become a better trader. So one thing, I took one class when I started out trading, I didn't learn how to make money, but I knew that I wanted to make money trading. And I did learn a basis, a foundation for technical analysis that did allow me to develop my own system, which is exactly what I did. So again, you can take something small and build on it. And that's what you have to do. And again, you have to keep moving forward. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day and take the entries and exits. Again, I run a live trading room where I am trading live and I am calling the entries, exits and stops in the room. If you'd like a trial, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. Um, again, I will offer free trials to people if you wanna come before you do the class. But the trading room, you must take the class to become a full-time member of the room. You do not have to uh, have any prerequisites for the options. Again, I'm looking for institutional money and I trade gaps. So I'm just gonna fast forward here because I'm kind of running out of time. If you're interested in my system, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The checklist tells you what to trade, when and in what direction, and it predicts directional bias in a stock. So the next class is July 22nd and 23rd, two, well, week and a half, almost two weeks. Class is online. Class tuition is $69.99. Again, you're gonna learn my rating system. We focus on shorting, but I am doing a Christmas in July special this week through Sunday, through Sunday. If you sign up for the Golden Gap Course combo, which includes the Golden Gap Course and the Trends Course, the price is $74.99. However, I'm doing a special where you'll receive the trading room free for one year, the options newsletter free for one year, the market report free for one year, and the Gap Options Course free, which is on August 9th, with this Christmas and July special. This sale ends July 16th. If you are interested, email me at melissathestockswish.com. And then I'm doing 30% off all of my subscriptions. So if you want to just sign up for the newsletter, I have a 12 month and six month subscription. The six month subscription is 30% off, which is a great price. It's 34.9930 and the 12 months is 48.9930. This is, you're just going to get the trades. This is not a class. You get the trades, you take the trades, the trades like we talked in today, you would have gotten those trades, you would have gotten the Nike trade. You get the train to your email, you will take it yourself, you will get out of it yourself. And again, I have targets on the letter. It's Melissa at the stock uh, swish.com. Here I will write it in the room. Um, will you need more courses after that? You don't really need any other course except for my Golden Gap course. But I do have the trends class, which is on long term trends, which I think helps you with swing trading, with options if you want to hold them, and the options class if you want to hone in and focus just on options. But you don't really need any other class except for the two day course which is the class that's the meat and potatoes of what I do, because that's where you're going to learn the system. That's where you're going to learn how I know that Nike is going to fall or how I know that JPM is going to do whatever it's going to do on Friday morning in the gap. And again, JPM may gap up or gap down on Friday and may not go in the direction of the gap. It may not. OK, so you, that's the that's the crux of it. I'm looking for one a day or, or, or more if I can get it in an option, but I'm only need one really move in a day trade to get in and out. You can't go long every bullish cap up and you can't short every gap down. And that's where people get confused. And I also don't do gap fills, even though some people do them because gap fills do not consistently work. Uh, futures, you would rate the market. You, you're just basically playing the market in futures. You're playing the QQQs or the SPY. You just traded JPM. Well, then, uh, then I'm doing good in that call. I didn't even look at it because I'm talking here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry for being five minutes late, but thank you. Any other questions? Thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, you're welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and take the screen back from you.